So yeah, so Teresa, thanks for joining us with Not Fest. Uh, we are big fans of the horror genre. Uh, and I, I have to say, right off the bat, probably my favorite thing about this film that you're in is there are real sharks. It's so easy to have CGI, boring, fake looking, phony sharks in our modern shark movies. And yeah. this is like the real deal. It, a lot of it looks and feels very practical and realistic. Could you talk to me a little bit about that and how that all, that aspect of it came together? Yeah, well, I think we kind of knew already going into it that that was really how uh, the director, Andrew Trouty, really likes to work, that he, you know, would hate to have a bunch of CGI clips in there. And that was something he was really working against because obviously it's easier to go that way. But I think he really wanted that feeling of knowing when you're seeing a shark that that is what the audience is responding to as well, because that's really what this is all about. It's about creating that feeling. So we uh, really just told where the shark would be. And that was kind of up to us to really rely on imagination sometimes, but then sure. also we'd have like kind of, sometimes there'd be like a fin or something just to kind of respond to or know where to look. But mostly, yeah, there are those clips of the real shark in there. So <clears throat> growing up in Australia, had, had you, you know, ever seen sharks? Had you been swimming with sharks? Did you, what was your shark experience prior to getting this role? Yeah, no, I don't have any shark experience. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a choice that I've made. Uh, yeah, I even like the more I was kind of researching and looking into like just kind of trying to get some visuals of the sharks and everything before going into it. Uh, you know, seeing even those like cage experiences and stuff like that, even those can go wrong. So <laughs> I think I've tried to keep at a distance as much as possible. And so far I'm doing okay with that, but it's really not hard to imagine what that situation is. And that's kind of what I right. think most of us were relying on. Yeah, that it, instant fear just kicks in. It's a very primal fear because it's, a, you know, any apex predator is a very primal sort of, you know, worry <laughs> for yeah, humans and all primal. animals. Yeah. yeah. Um, so had you, seen the uh the first film and i mean it, it's interesting to me there's a, quite a gap in years between the two movies uh it's one of those where you hear there's a sequel in development you're like oh cool kind of forgot <laughs> about that i didn't know there was like more coming you know um yeah. were you familiar with uh with the reef before had you seen it when it was out i hadn't seen the original and once i found that i was doing this i chose not to watch it just in case i mimicked mm. anything subconsciously yeah um, but I'd seen other films of Andrews, like the Blackwater um, series and things like that. But yeah, not not the Reef. <laughs> right on. Um, so when it comes to playing a character who is, you know, when we meet her, she's dealing with this, you know, tremendous tragedy that's happened to a loved one and PTSD and mourning and all of the different things that come along with that. What as an actor do you do to sort of prepare to get in that headspace and how do you shake off being in that headspace when you're wrapped for the day yeah I mean it's kind of its own sort of like you have to almost section off when you're allowing yourself to really kind of fully experience it and then I, I will say like checking out of this character took some time um because it, it does it sort of takes hold of your body whether you kind of logically know that it, it should let go or not it's still there um for the the homework of this and working on that kind of part of things. I definitely looked into a lot of kind of PTSD, trauma, domestic violence, and just watching a bunch of stuff as well, like looking into different um, people's stories that have gone through it, including like victims as well as, you know, family members and things like that, just seeing how it kind of impacts pretty much everyone involved, including those that are caring about the person that's kind of going through it. So. For me, it was understanding that world, but then also finding a way to make it truthful for me so that it wasn't acting out an idea. So I kind of, you know, my way of working with things is finding what is similar of myself with the character. And I kind of try to really bring that to light, but then also there is that element of loss of a loved one and that kind of a thing, which I think a lot of people can connect with. And I know I did. So uh, that was something that really helped me to access her as well as just she has this kind of a need outside of herself of needing to protect others and particularly her sister in this. So that was something that I could really kind of hold on to of 
the fact that I'm fighting for something, not just, you know, expressing emotion, that there is a need there. Yeah, and I really appreciated that this film had that depth, you know, not to make an ocean pun, but that there was mm -hmm. that, you know, emotionalism happening story-wise because it, it's really easy to make a film like this that's, you know, a shark is stalking people, but there's not really much there if you don't have this to kind of, oh my God, I almost said sink your teeth into. If you don't have this to uh, to work with, you know, story-wise. Uh, and yeah, and you're right. It's, you know, losing someone close to you is, is something, unfortunately, everyone uh, at some point can relate to. And I think that one of the things that's great about art and film is that you can tell stories like this that are in this kind of exaggerated, fantastical setting or situation but are really dealing with things that people deal with in normal humdrum life yeah i think that was something that i really liked about the script initially and was hoping that that was something that the way that it read on the page was how it was going to be actually executed and presented because it is like you said it's so easy for this kind of a film to be you know to just play into the expectations of it being that sort of like you know jumps every few minutes and that kind of a thing but I really love that there was this real story there and there are these characters that are experiencing something so different from, well, not even, I mean, there's the physical danger of them, what they're facing, but then also they're experiencing so many other things. And for me, I feel like that's what propels the story and the fact that that's sort of at the forefront, really, I hope it kind of sets it apart from different other shark films. Mm. Uh, you, and you, you actually answered my next question, which was, what do you oh, think sets this movie apart from, from other short oh, films? Yeah. No, it's great. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. Uh, I also, I, you know, in, in doing a little bit of homework ahead of time, uh, I read that you started acting at a young age and fell in love with theater and you did some writing and things like that. So I, I have to wonder, you know, obviously theater requires so much imagination in terms of the environment and the set and all that sort of thing. And then making a film like this where you're, you know, actually in the water <laughs> and it's the, the world is like the backdrop. Um, it, I, I guess if you could speak to sort of the unique advantages and disadvantages between the two environments, like more intimate kind of imagined scene and a bigger place where there's real life scenery all around you. Yeah, uh, well, definitely with theater. I mean, the great thing is that depending on who you're working with or the kind of show, the ensemble is really what kind of grounds you into the world mm. where, and the rest is, or a lot of it is then imagination. Um, and rehearsal is a big part of it as well, which we didn't get much of with this. We had about a week's rehearsal for this one, but then having, oh, wow. de yeah, definitely having the location just be your set. I think that already, it sort of like finds its way into your body, I think in smaller ways that I'm not sure if it would be the same kind of film if it were all shot in, you know, some big yeah. studio. The, it's it's hard not to look at the horizon and just be just so enamored by it. But then I think that juxtaposed with like what's actually happening and everything just sort of starts to play already for you without mm. you having to necessarily create moments, which was really cool about this. I was even saying like um, looking out in like, it happened to most of us where we'd have a moment where you'd see something sort of look like a ripple in the water and you just. <laughs> Is that like the fear is just so easy to access out there as well? Yeah, indeed. Hey, you you remember how small we are when you're out there, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now I understand the films actually uh, came out uh, like kind of earlier than expected in Australia, right? It's in theaters. A little surprise. Um, have, have people yeah, been think... seeing it and reacting to it yet? Have you heard any? Gotten any feedback from people, social media, or out and about? Yeah, not yet. I think it, it doesn't get released in Australia until the 28th. But it oh, the 28th, been, okay. Yeah, it, it's been out in Dubai, I think, which is something I've sort of been popping up on social media. I've seen that. Uh, not many reviews, so I think we're kind of just waiting for it to hit basically, you know, the US as well. So it's like, yeah. and the cinema's here. So yeah, not, not many reviews coming in yet, but I am definitely keeping an eye out. I, I want to know, if, yeah, how people respond to this, I guess. Yeah, how, how people connect with it. Um, I have to ask you, uh, not only one of my favorite shows of all time, but uh, when I was uh, still working at MTV, it was it was my beat. I covered it for the first several seasons, uh, but The Vampire Diaries, I'm just, I'm a huge fan. Uh, and uh, I, I was there, you know, um, 
Julie Pleck and I follow each other on Twitter and Instagram. That's how that's how much I was covering the Vampire Diaries really? once upon a time. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I have to ask you, you know, now that that universe is sort of wrapped up with the last show from that world for now going mm -hmm. off the air, is that, you know, obviously you're a bit removed from it at this point, but was that kind of a bittersweet to hear that thing to hear that it's, you know, wrapping up for now or... Definitely. I think, I mean, hearing that news, it almost just, it was one of those moments where you just sort of never envisioned the world without some kind right. of spin-off or something existing at the time, particularly like it's been around for so, so long as well. Uh, hearing that was, I think, surprising, but I also feel like it, I don't know if it's the end because I just right. feel like if, if there were a world that's been created where there is just so much potential for new stories to be told and new characters I think it's there already like the groundwork has been laid now it's just I'm hopeful that we see something come from it at least you know in the near future and somehow they were able to cast performers to play vampires who turned out to be ageless in real life it's <laughs> like you still you still look at like what you know whether it's Claire Holt or Ian Summerhold or whatever like you see them and it's like they look the same as they did in season one i know i don't know what their secrets are but they're just eternally gorgeous people <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> yeah so yeah i agree with you i think i think there's you know it's inevitable that it will return in, in some form but but it was strange to think like uh oh there's a there's a moment now where there just isn't a show on the air <laughs> there was always yeah. a show on the air for three shows in a row Exactly. Yeah. Very, very strange. But, you know, Julie's amazing. And I think just the work that she's put in as well, like there is just, yeah, there's a huge scope that I think can still be accessed. So I'll, I'll be looking out and rooting for them. For sure. Time. For yeah. sure. Same, 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 same. Uh, so I wanted to ask you why I've got you, you know, because we are talking about uh, a shark movie. Uh, do you have uh, favorite genre films? Have you, did you ever go through a phase where you watch uh shark movies in particular or horror movies generally or psychological thriller not to put you on the spot we don't expect you to be an no, no, aficionado um, but just curious yeah i think um i mean i've always been into thrillers which is like it's probably got a lot to do with like my mum's vhs collection it was very like thriller lots of um I'm trying to think of like double jeopardy and sleeping with the enemy that kind of thing oh nice <laughs> yeah I mean, that, was kind of, yeah. that was a whole <laughs> genre i mean it was kind of uh, you know at the risk of uh, sounding tasteless, like the, like the erotic thriller genre. It was, and yeah, yeah. It definitely, that was a vibe of its own. Um, yeah. But now it's like, I, I still, I mean, yeah, horrors, I kind of went off the like the super, super gore stuff. I just kind of got to a point where I pulled back from that a bit, but I love the stuff that keeps the suspense going. Yeah. And like, you know, and I don't know, for like a shock moment, because I have such an appreciation for what the special effects and makeup department can do. Because even particularly working in, into the Badlands and stuff, you just see what they what they're able to create. And I think if something can look cool as it happens, I love that. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to be too detailed about things that happen, but um, yeah, I, I really like that kind of stuff. And horrors, I, I really get into. I like the jumpy ones. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a jump scare fan, and I'm also a big believer that what you don't see is scarier than. What they might put on screen so yeah. yeah i'm not i'm not big into like the torture porn genre they call it where it's just you know non-stop gore being perpetrated on a person yeah. for long scenes um yeah i'm i'm much more like the uh where there's mystique and there's some mystery and things to you know to have you turning the lights on when you get home yeah. i like that sort of stuff a lot better it's a lot, it's a lot more effective than when they just show it to you and you're like oh it's just this is just gross this isn't scary yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, your, yeah. your mind can make it so much worse yeah you know the like erotic thriller genre in the 90s <laughs> isn't it strange that they don't really make those movies anymore uh, like yeah. it's i don't know what happened like you know westerns so many romantic comedies like every every genre always has like something happening even though it ebbs and flows and i feel like you know the era of like your basic instincts and uh, those kind of movies yeah. like they're just not we don't, we just don't get them anymore I know I'm trying to think if I've seen anything similar because it is such an oddly specific kind of like yeah 
with films for some and it, reason. And it seems very 90s, right? Like I know there were there were, you know, I'm sure cinephiles are shaking their fists that are watching this right now. Cause I know there were great ones in the 70s and everything too. But um I mean I guess Eyes Wide Shut was maybe the last really big one. I mean, that's almost an yeah. art film. Yeah. I'm thinking more like the, the sort of cheesier ones. I know. I, I'm trying to think. I feel like there probably are some on like some streaming things, but I definitely don't feel like it's kind of been leading like at the cinema. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have that same sort of pop culture, you know, the way that like Body Heat and Double Indemnity yeah. and and those kind of movies like captured the zeitgeist once yeah. upon a time. And some of those movies still hold up as you know strong performances and all that. And then some of them are you know cringy. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, what a what a genre! Somebody somebody's gonna become like the big filmmaker that resurrects that genre. Oh yeah, <laughs> and does the like smart self referential <laughs> like the scream for the erotic thriller. <laughs> yeah, and nod back at them in between. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Um, so, what do you have coming up after this? Are you working on anything now? Is there anything in the chamber? Yeah, n- not at the moment. So I just got back to Melbourne, I guess, a few weeks ago. So I'm really just checking in with family. I've been trying to get back to things that I've been writing, but like, it's one of those things, the discipline needs to be there. So I'm working on stuff like that, but also just keeping an eye out for the next thing that I, I'm excited about. I'm really like kind of becoming a bit more, I don't know, particular with what I choose. It needs to be something that sort of excites me at the time as well. So yeah, nothing new on the horizon, but hopefully something soon something good i did a profile uh it was during the lockdown so it was maybe a year gosh it might have even been 2020 but i did a pretty in-depth profile on this guy named paul de gelder who uh was in the australian navy was like a a guy who did like uh diffusing bombs and stuff like that like a special services guy but anyway um lost uh an arm and i think both legs if i remember correctly to a shark in a shark attack and and he's now and the profile was actually for shark week because he does a lot of stuff now with uh, discovery channel here on shark week and he had a show where he like took will smith swimming with sharks and took mike tyson swimming with sharks and he's you know prosthetics and all this stuff yeah. super knowledgeable about sharks in general and i, I like the idea of uh, you know the, the, like with anything that there's a balance of what we actually know about sharks versus making sharks like the villain in a horror film yeah you know it's it, it's important i think to keep that distinction a little bit it's like they, they, they will eat us but they don't necessarily want to no, <laughs> they, don't, yeah, they don't have no, a grudge no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's more fun and fantastical in movies to uh to have the shark going after somebody very specifically <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's to be that drive the shark. <laughs> Great, well, the, the <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the movie is out here July 29th. It's going to be in theaters and also streaming here in the United States. So we'll make sure to tell people that they should go see it because it's uh, it definitely has um, a lot of gosh, you know, I'm going to say meat on the bones. I swear I didn't plan these bad puns. No, I didn't. Know. It's got a lot to chew on. <laughs> uh story-wise in addition to being a really cool shark movie that has actual ocean and shark in it which is not yeah. always the case for shark films these days usually I sometimes the water's not even real <laughs> so, <laughs> I can <back> to that. <laughs> well thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us uh with not fast we really appreciate you coming to do it and look forward to seeing what you have coming in the future awesome thank you so much thanks so much